God compares an akazu so that my household can be full. So when a principality brings government, you need another agent to compare people to come. You can build a church but to be empty. Capacity in prayer is a tenacity and a dogged adherence towards the pursuit of the person of God. When you say, let's see God, you'll be amazed. How many godless people are in church? But when you say, now, God wants to release favor for breakthrough, the building will collapse. And that's why every day they keep coming for breakthrough. But there is a realm where men get to. They are not looking for breakthrough. They are the breakthrough. When they come to your house, naturally things will begin to work. Other people can come and do ritual. They may come to your house. They may not even pray. But because they came there, the atmosphere they bring there will cause your heaven to open. Imagine if your home became a portal. Because you have sought God there for so long that when people need issues done, all they need to do is to visit your home. And somebody comes to your house and says, okay, don't worry, just go to my prayer room. After 10 minutes, come out. That's the generation God wants to raise. A generation of women that know the presence, that stays in the presence, and from the presence, they command change. You can stay in the presence and even your husband knows that he will fulfill purpose. Your husband, he just knows. You can stay in the presence and your sons will know they can misbehave. They, you don't need to sit down, wake them up by 5 a.m. in the morning and begin to give them rules of life. It was never recorded that Hannah sat somewhere in the morning and is telling him, avoid women, uh, read your book, go to church. Before Samuel came, the contract concluded on the altar. So when he came, he had no choice. He has to walk in it. Because before he came, he was already dedicated. You, 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 don't, you can't change your mind. It's too late. I've thought before that some of us would not have been preaching. The last thing I want to do is to hold the microphone and preach. Those days when I go to church, I sit at the back. My mom will laugh. He say, you. <laughs> I have given you up before you came. You have no choice. I gave you up long before you came. When they talk about me, say leave him. That's a prophet. Me, prophet. I had many ideas. I was creative about things. There were many things in my head. But I didn't know that a spirit was watching over me. He was just waiting for the time appointed of the father. Because a contract took place without my consent. And because I came from her loins, I could not change the things that she uttered. And when I came of age, the finger of God saw, he found me. And when he put his hand on me, the hand was too heavy. Even though I didn't want to, I couldn't do otherwise. How can your own son be wayward? Because you don't know the author. How can your daughter be looking for who to marry? The destiny that you have already written with God and signed with tears. How can that destiny be compromised? How can your husband womanize and run around? The same husband that before he came, God showed you on the altar. The same husband whose leg was manipulated by the Holy Ghost to find you. He didn't know why he came to Abuja. He thought he came to do a business pro business or to run a contract and then god dragged him until he came to find you at that corner where you were sitting how can that husband now leave you and go to roam about as if you didn't beget him on the altar why do you think you are called mothers because you bet everything you have and if it came from you it is yours and then somebody said they took my husband which your husband how can they take him the one you betted before you married. But people don't see God. So they don't enter authority levels. Every mother is beyond the home. The day you became a mother, you are not just a mother of a home. You became a mother of all the sons in that neighborhood. You became a mother of that territory. You became a responsible owner and watcher over that whole environment 
everywhere your son can go to you own that place because you are the one he said the prayer of your parents shall be a canopy a covering over you even when you are in a strange land but you cannot walk in such power unless by prayer you have been able to forgo everything to seek God and when you find him everything that is in God becomes yours capacity in prayer this is why you are travelers this is why you have a womb to bet things into the natural there are too many things that are still in the spirit most of us are yet to begin to born I know you have a daughter but you have not begun to bet things yet until from the altar things begin to come out of your spirit things begin to come out of your spirit things begin to come out of your spirit that is where true power is that's what we call capacity in prayer yeah. altar is beckoning on you there are many things waiting for you to bet the prayer altar is calling on you there are many homes that are waiting deliverance because you have not risen there are many marriages are waiting deliverance because you have not risen there are many breakthroughs in territories that are not possible because you have not risen. If there is one language a woman should know, it should be a language of prayer. Because a woman by nature is a begetter. As soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth her children. You are natural mothers. And so the heritage of Zion, to a very large degree, awaits your travail. Now, when these two things begin to happen, I have about four of them, but because of time, I will stop. When these two things begin to happen, then you begin to enter the realms of prayers. And the first realm of prayer is what we call stamina. You see, when you have not understood this, you will not understand what spiritual stamina is. Stamina in the place of prayer is not exercising your will. Stamina in the place of prayer is mastery in yielding to the Holy Spirit. So you begin to function by the energy of the Holy Spirit. So you find somebody that was weak suddenly goes to pray and then the person is there for 10 hours. You who want to exercise your will, you can come there and insist. That's beautiful. But it's beyond it. Because that person praying by yieldedness, when he, he or she is done praying, he will become stronger. You who exercise your will, when you are done praying, you will be weak. Because you were functioning by ATP. But you cannot understand spiritual stamina until these two things I shared. You have put it to work until it has become natural with you. In stamina, the Holy Ghost comes into you and mantles you. That is the authority you have that when you look at people, you'll see them beyond what they look like. A lady can come to your, to your house. Her hair is fully tied. Her neck is covered as if she wants to strangle herself. And her skirt is long to the floor. But when you see her, you'll see Jezebel. you know her ambition. The reason is because you are not judging by the sight of the eyes. 
you are judging by the spirit that have saturated you. So beyond the disguise, you can tell her intention. That's why when your husband wants to go out, you can tell him, don't go out today. Don't go out. Don't go out today. If he, if he refuses, after two, three times, he will now understand that when my wife says, don't go out, don't go out. Because my wife goes ahead of me in prayer. And then when you are going somewhere as a man, even if your wife were not conscious, you will tell her to say something. Because everything she says becomes the outcome of that outing. Because she has become the prophet that guides your journey. That's when women truly begin to gain rank. Because they have yielded to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost has mantled them. And when the Holy Ghost mantles them, they become the compass for the navigation of the home. When they say women are the builders of the home, it's not by sitting everybody down and advising them. It's by going ahead of the home in the spirit. When the husband is laboring, the woman is going ahead of, her, of him. The things that the husband will naturally negate, they are the things the woman does naturally. I can tell you by experience that built into a woman is endurance. If I were to be pregnant for one week, <laughs> the most enduring man cannot carry pregnancy for two months the, the design of the woman all reveals her spiritual propensities that means what a man cannot sit on for one week a woman can sit on it for one year that's why women do gossip a lot and keep malice because they are incubators when you offend them they can be on that matter for one year. But the man is not an incubator. He quarrels and he forgets about it. The woman will be there. He will come back two weeks later and say, that thing you did, I told you. You thought it has been settled. And then one month later, something happened. He said, this is the same thing you did the last time. And the man wants to... The woman is functioning like that because she has not entered her office as an intercessor. When she enters her office as an intercessor, that's how she will sit on the matters of the home. And she will insist until those things are sorted out. It's called stamina. That's why every time a great man is about to appear in scripture, the angel will leave the man and go and tell the woman. Because if he tells the man, he will go and preach about it and forget. But when he told Manoah's wife, he said, eat no strong drink, drink no strong drink. And let no razor come upon his head, for he shall be a Nazarite unto the Lord. The woman was there for nine months. We didn't remember about the man. Even when the angel came the second time, the man forgot. Because there is no stamina. He doesn't understand how to yield. Even in the marriage equation, you are the one commanded to submit. Because yieldedness is a natural proponent that the Holy Ghost brings into you as you activate your life in the spirit. And on the strength of that yieldedness, you can yield to the Holy Spirit and begin to incubate on the purpose of that marriage until it finds expression. When children rises, it's because their mothers were warriors. When families succeed, it's because their mother, the, the, the woman of the house, is an intercessor. When you see a man walking in favor, it's because there's an engine room that you don't see. It is the woman that has the stamina in the home. Every home where children are wayward, there was a problem with the mother. Every home where children are great, then you find a great intercessor. She may not say it, but even the children know. And every time sons are to give testimonies, they may respect their father, but you will know where their allegiance lie. Because they know who bettered them. It's a grace called stamina that every woman has the capacity to incubate like a hen. The egg can be formed and the hen will sit on it. If the hen stands up before the time, the egg will be destroyed. It will no longer be an egg and it will not grow into a chick. That's the problem of many children in society because their mothers never built stamina. God told you that your son will be great. You told everybody, but you didn't bet it on the altar. And then after a while, when the star of your son begins to shine, the demon see it. And instead of you to have covered them in the place of prayer, you didn't develop stamina. And so because there was no covering over that child, that child becomes vulnerable. But when the borders begin to rise, there will be mothers in Israel 
mothers that know the purposes of God and the ordinations of God for a generation. And they will not just preach it, but they will sit on it until it is born. We are preaching revival today, but I can tell you by visions and by the privilege of ordination that most of the revivers, dimensions of the revival we will see, they will break out of women's prayer closets. When revival came to Israel through Samuel, it was a business between Hannah and God. When revival came to Israel through Samson, it was a business between an angel and Manoah's wife. When Jesus showed up, it was a business between Anna, the prophetess, and the Holy Spirit. Most revivers have their root with women that have built stamina. They know how to yield to the Holy Spirit. Why do you think when a woman is offended, she begins to cry? Because all she knows to do is to pour her heart to God. And in pouring her heart to God, there is a, a spiritual component that is built on her inside. It's called spiritual stamina. Because that is where, that, through that traveling, that bettings take place. May your womb in the spirit not be useless while you are on the face of the earth. Have you not noticed that a woman can sit in one spot and gossip for the whole day? There is something in her spirit. It's called stamina. But that stamina must be converted through prayer until it becomes a gate for betting. When purposes are born, it's because women have built stamina in the spirit. A woman does not strive and say, I want to be known. I want to be the preacher. A woman can come to church. She's comfortable sitting by her husband's side. If her husband is doing well, she's full of joy. There are those God has put his hand upon that lead generation. But most of them, they want to do their job at the back. Because there is something about incubation that is in their spirit. It's called stamina. As you begin to build capacity, the first thing you will notice is that stamina will come to your spirit. And sometimes you will tell your husband, let's pray. After 30 minutes, he's already snoring. But you can be there till 4 a.m. in the morning. And you can remember everything that needs to be addressed because stamina has come. When that begins to happen, you have begun to journey in the realms of prayer. And when you journey beyond stamina, the second realm of prayer is called ascension. In ascension, what happens to you is that those cries that have gone to heaven, you will begin to receive feedback from heaven. Once upon a time, you prayed for three weeks and all you had was that the body was lifted and suddenly as you keep developing stamina a point comes where when you pray you go to sleep and you see a vision ascension has come a point comes when you pray an angel walks into your room ascension has come a point comes when you pray the holy ghost begins to talk to you about the churches in abuja and you are asking yourself i'm not a prophet a prophetess i'm not an apostle why are you telling me about the churches because the true business is on the altar, not on the pulpit. When ascensions begin to take place, you begin to receive feedback from heaven. In the book of Hebrews chapter 11, it says women receive their dead back to life. That means the things that time gave up on. Because this woman can join into eternity. They can superimpose that dimension into time. And when you think something has failed, call a woman. Because through ascension, she will be able to bring divine feedbacks. There are many of you here that as you begin to pray, you will naturally begin to ascend in the spirit. And you will know the future of your husband, the future of your children, the future of your family, the future of your territory. Because God will begin to entrust you with the powers to see beyond the now. It is called ascension in the spirit. It's a realm of encounter that people enter through prayer. Because prayer is not just about answered prayers or answers to what you demand. Prayer is about entering into the realm of God and trafficking in that dimension. In Jeremiah 33 verse 3, it says, Call unto me and I will answer. And then after answering, it went to another level. It said, I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of that is what we call ascension that somebody begins to pray 
And after God answers him, God say, wait. The prayer doesn't end with answer. There are things I want to show you now. And suddenly that person shows up. And that person becomes a divine router that brings the purposes of God to bear in a family and in a territory. Because ascension has taken place. Now, well, let me tell you something. Many times, when God wants to do great things, he looks for people that don't look like it. Because when he carries a man who looks like it, he will have something to boast in. And say, it's because I'm educated. Most of the women today that are being marginalized, they are the hope of tomorrow. 